Hey there YouTube. Okay, I um this is a needs must thing. Basically I need this board and I got a um, circuit protection. This is what I had to do a little while ago and I wanted to have a little look at some different types of circuit protection. So I've built four here. We got a single diode and this will work on the basis of if you get the connection the right way round it will work if you put the connection on the wrong way round like if I power this the wrong way round it won't work so we've got 5 volts there we have a DMM and we're going to connect some voltage first of all I'm going to connect it the right way round connect that to there connect that on there um, with 5 volts, no current being drawn, and we got 4.8 there. Okay, now of course, depending on the sort of ampage you may want to put through this, it's going to be dependent on the, the size of diode that you have. Um, this is just for demonstration, and it's not having any current drawn through it, so it doesn't really matter. And if I take this off and reverse polarity connection uh, make a reverse connection it's still 5 volts, no current draw but that's what we get as an output and if I just disconnect that really no difference whatsoever so that works, that's effective, you've got a, you've got a voltage drop low and that's something to keep in keep in mind. And you've really got to um, back in the old days with the CB radios when I used to help somebody in a CB radio repair shop. Uh, this was always called the idiot diode. Uh, that would be a thing that a lot of time people would blow when they reverse polarity their um, CB radios to the power supply and they blow a diode inside. Um, <clears throat> that's what my friend liked to call it. Anyway, so. We can take those off there. Now on this one, this is a sort of better circuit in a way, but then for the what I wanted, not. The, the reason I say that is I wanted to put some protection, reverse polarity protection on a little setup I made for a friend. And uh, damn it, and. Um, it the wrong way around. Haha, <laughs> did anybody notice? Need output. But I wanted him to see that he'd got it the wrong way around just so he kept his mind on the business, you know? Anyway, so basically what we got, still got 5 volts over there. I get a bit sidetracked when I'm trying to concentrate as well. So we connect this up this way. And hopefully I can just get that straight onto the metal. It's a lot easier doing this when you got two hands. And uh, there we go, we got four and a half volts. Well, 4.5, 6. There's still no current being drawn. And the nice thing about this one is if you do get it the wrong way around, because it's just set up, um, it, it doesn't really matter. You put it the wrong way around, look, you can't connect that. Push that out of the way. I bet you missed all that because I, I forgot where the camera was looking. Um, and so we reversed the polarity and we've still got 4.5. It was 4.56, wasn't it? It was 4.57. So that works okay. Again, it's one of those where you've got to make sure you size your diodes um, in relation to your circuit. So what the current you're going to be drawing. Now the one that sort of does beat these, it beats them not for cost or for simplicity or for just having the part in your box. It beats it because you've got a lower voltage drop and you can, and you know this this will carry some some ampage. Now you know they're all different, and so they're all going to you know carry a different amount of ampage to allow it through. Um, but this is just using a P channel. 
MOSFET and it's sort of connected up in reverse to what you'd normally connect it up to um, and this is as simple as it gets as well you've got a 10k resistor between the um, gate and the ground you have between the, the gate and the source um, yeah that is the because uh, this is the drain the power uh, is coming in it goes into the drain and then we come out the source and this is where I've got this is where we're going to connect the um, multimeter to and so there's a 10 volt zener there and that's just the, the standard you know protection between great gate and uh, uh, source on MOSFETs anyway and put the zener across but this will work well well basically that's just black here is a negative connection and yellow is our positive so we got that there and if I connect up negative to there Ooh, and, yet. and positive to there there's no current draw at all and the nice thing about this one look is you've still got 5 volts so and then if we do the reverse of polarity on here basically it will just shut off the circuit It's not not pulling anything through the circuit. Not drawing any current or anything. And that's that for reverse polarity. So that's pretty good. There's no voltage drop, you see. And another reason why I, I would have thought this would probably be better for what I had in mind was just because um, dealing with the 12 volt car battery, when you get the voltage drop, half a volt across these. Well, when it comes to you know your, your 12 volt batteries. And these guys out there know when it comes to you know, charging these batteries and keeping these batteries you don't really want your battery to drop below 12.5 because it starts getting into the area where it's becoming a problem to the battery you want to keep that thing above 12.5 you know um, and so having the voltage drop can be quite significant uh, when it comes to those sort of things so or maybe i'm just talking Google Gaga, I really don't know, what I wanted to do was just see what the difference was, I've just decided, I was suggested this circuit and it works really well and it is great because four diodes from you got yourself some really good volt, uh, circuit protection because it doesn't matter which way around you put the wires, it, it allows, uh, you know, it, it basically it's just going to it's just gonna channel it through one way anyway, it's always going to come out that same point, so it doesn't matter which way around you connect it. This one is slightly different, this one uses what it calls it, it's called an intelligent I just said it in such a way that it sounds negative but I don't mean it like that it's just that it's a bit weird when things are suggested to be intelligent uh, I'll just put that in there basically what you've got it is you've got a, um, a PMP transistor and a NPN transistor and the PMP transistor it's set up to pass current by by having current pulled out of his base okay now in this example 5 volts where uh, the MPN can pull a lot of current out of the PMP base and can saturate it down to under 100 millivolt okay I'm reading this this is not coming out of my head the 3.3k resistor which is here uh, that limits the amount of base current to the PMP the 10k resistor which is here um, yeah the 10k resistor uh, that provides a signal to the MPN to turn on when the V in power is correctly is of the correct clarity and to turn off when it's backwards the 4.7 um, meg resistor which is this one here so uh, here I am making the video and I'm just explaining how this works and uh, I, I, I take a look in the back of my video thing and it's all frozen I can't actually turn it off, it won't turn off by the power button on the front it's just frozen I don't know if that's because we're in the middle of a storm or, or what's really going on 
but that is frozen and I was just explaining about this and I will explain now that I was reading it not just having it come out of my head <laughs> Mummy, camera is frozen so I was going to do a little review on this um, and that's going to be one of the first things I talk about why would this thing just want to freeze up and I'm telling you, look, it doesn't stop I can press the button, it's absolutely no life, it's frozen um, I can press this power button on the front and just hold it just like it's holding, still holding it in, unclick it, hold it in, unclick it, we should have something. Press the one on top which starts, stops the video. It's a bit weird because I'm trying to do it all with one hand because I'm holding this camera in this hand. And it doesn't do anything. So what I've got to do with this now is to either leave it for it to go dead or take the batteries out, the battery out, and have to reset it all again um, to get rid of the date stamp and all that sort of crap. Hmm. So, oh, that's good, isn't it? It freezes. That's really helpful. But just to finish off this video, because as I said at the start of the one I'm on here, and I really hope I get to keep the video because that'll be quite annoying. I'll probably better leave it till the battery runs out. So I'm not quite sure what I've got to do there. The other buttons on the sides don't do anything either because I'm pressing those and don't do anything. Look at the state of this one. Mm. Build another power supply, this time using the uh, LM338s. Two of them. Voltage, current adjust. Right, back to this. So let's go over this again. So, basically, what we've got going on here is we've got a PMP transistor is set up to pass current. This one. Uh, by having the current pulled out of its base. Now, uh, the MPN can pull a lot of current out of the PMP base and can saturate it down to under 100 millivolts pretty good the 3.3k which is this baby here it says the limits the amount of base current to the PMP and the 10k resistor um, this one uh, the 10k resistor provides a signal to the MPN to turn on when the V in is the correct, correct priority and turn off when it's backwards the 4.7 meg, which goes from this positive to here, which is the base, uh, and 100k resistors help keep their respective, or well, the 100k, sorry, is here, help keep their respective um, transistors, help them turn off when they're supposed to be off. And the IN4148 diode uh, protects the MPN transistor from damage in reverse uh, base emitter breakdown. And that's what I was trying to say, and I was going to show you it working. So, let's just put that back on, we're still on 5 volts over there. And so I'm going to put it on the correct way around first. Oh, first of all, let me just ensure that we're going to. Uh, I need power out of here, and I need my ground there. Okay, so let me just connect these up again so the So you can see that I'm trying to nib on to the this. There we go, let's get this one. It's like painting the back side when you've only got you know, two hands. Okay, that's still frozen. Let's put the uh, the ground on here. Is that the zoom in or something? No, that's zooming in now. That's on the zoom. Sorry if it's all shaky. Okay, so now look, there's a little bit of current draw there and it's pulled it down to 4.99. But we did have 5 volt there, and now I suppose it's warmed up a little bit, maybe it's gone to zero. So let's just do the reverse polarity, make sure this sucker works. And so We've got no current draw or anything, and that's the reading there. So, and if I take off one of the leads, like to the ground, look, there is a bit of a difference there. When I connect it up to the ground, connect it now, so there is a little bit of a difference there. And again, you know, it's um, the amount of current you can draw through these is going to be sort of pre-dependent on your 
on the old transistor here. And even with this, you certainly want a heat sink, depending on how much current you'll be pulling through it. I think that's it's not very high voltage, I think it's like 55 volts and uh, so around about 30 amps or something. I'm not exactly sure. It doesn't really matter, it's just a demonstration. Uh, just to show that it actually breaks the circuit and doesn't pull any power or anything dodgy. So, what would I say was the best out of all this lot? I, 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 I reckon this is, you know, for convenience, ease of use and uh, for low power stuff. This is great. Can't really go wrong with that. Something you want more power through, um, it's got to be the MOSFET because it's got the um, pretty much you know very low voltage drop, and you'll probably find yourself even a, a better MOSFET. I've got I've got some good MOSFETs going actually with 0 0.0.02 RDS. Uh, and this one's probably a little bit more complicated. But it's considered to be it's where I've seen it on the website. It's the intelligent one. I'll show you the actual schematic for that. Okay, yeah, you can see that. You have to pause it or something. Sorry, I'm a bit shaky. Uh, yeah, but that's it. So, a bit of reverse polarity. Um, and I need to whip all these off because I need this because I need to build my circuit for, for building this power supply. Look at those capacitors. Look at these. Mm -hmm. Baby Lou. Tank capacitors. Brilliant. Right on game. Uh, cheers for watching, guys. Have you got this far?